Recently, I've been showing off a bunch of weapons that the player in my indie game now has access to. Since then, I've added my new favorite weapon, the boomerang. There's a short throw option where it always comes back to you, and then if you hard throw it like you can the other weapons, it'll go way farther, but boomerangs will only come back if it hits an enemy. To help get players used to the controls, I added a minigame where you have to hit all of the balloons within 30 seconds. Some people on Discord have been getting some ridiculously fast times on this. But once you clear the minigame for the first time, you'll be able to stop back here and pick up a new boomerang whenever you want. This leads back into the topic of weapon durability again, which I talked about in the last video. People in the comments were leaving tons of really thoughtful ideas and solutions to how durability should be handled. Renaming the system to something like sharpness, or having the weapon be dulled, were both popular suggestions. One thing I began to realize as I was reading these comments is that my claim of using positive incentives to get rid of weapons wasn't really accurate. I was claiming that Zelda feels bad because each hit consumes durability, and that my game should use positive incentives instead. But the system I came up with was still negative. Each hit still consumes durability, it's just a little less punishing than Zelda since the weapon doesn't break, it just dulls. A positive incentive would actually be the opposite, where you gain some charge to optionally do a really powerful attack that consumes the weapon. And I experimented with this, as well as some other ideas, but to reach that final decision, I needed to rework how damage in my game behaved in general. I noticed that as I played, all of these damage numbers were totally meaningless to me. If I got hit for 6 damage, it wasn't really noticeable compared to getting hit for 4 damage. And the damage I dealt didn't really mean much to me either, since I'm just focusing on landing my hits. This led me to consider simplifying everything. Keep in mind, I can always change things back to how they were, but this is what I'm currently thinking. Each hit now does 1 damage. If it's a powerful attack, it does 2 damage. That simple. I decided the player's health should reflect this idea as well, so rather than a health bar of HP, I'm trying out a Zelda-like hearts system, except I'm using moons for story reasons. The crescent moons are like half hearts. I feel like a health system like this makes it a lot easier to tell how many more hits I can take. With a fast-paced game like mine, the numbers sort of lose their significance when instead I'm able to communicate damage in other ways. Especially considering that most normal enemies will only take 5 or 6 hits on average anyway. One of the benefits of larger damage numbers though is that it lets you balance DPS by just altering the damage values. And with just 1s and 2s as options, I'll need to balance each weapon through its general playstyle and mechanics. Another option for balancing the weapons is durability, where really strong weapons can break faster than weaker ones. However, after a lot of consideration, I've finally decided that there will be no durability for the weapons. If hitting an enemy with a weapon costs the player anything, weapon sharpness or durability, it leads to items going unused, or players just avoiding fights altogether. I think it's fine for some exceptions, like the torch having a limited amount of fuel, but in general, using weapons won't degrade them in any way. That being said, weapons still need to break. I need some optional incentive for players to switch between multiple weapons as they play, so that there's more variety in the combat. Throughout the game, I plan for there to be tons of weapons lying around or that get dropped by enemies, and you can always just grab another one if yours breaks. But rather than breaking through usage, this time I'm actually going to use positive incentives. One thing I did get right in the previous video is throwing the weapons to break them. There's a positive incentive to do so, because it deals heavy damage at a distance and gives the player some money. This ability might even be upgradable somewhere else in the game to make it even more tempting to throw. I don't think this is enough though. If you like a weapon, getting rid of it to do some damage probably won't be worth it, even if that same weapon is easily replaceable later on. But as I was reworking the damage and health systems, I remembered a pretty major mechanic from this game genre that I haven't been utilizing, and that's healing. If you take damage in my game, you get fully healed when you save, but when you're in a dungeon or in the middle of a boss fight, there's no getting your health back, until I added this option where you destroy your weapon to heal some health. My game always had a magic casting mechanic, most recently used for the lightning spell, but I'm setting it up so that from the start of the game, casting magic while holding any item will destroy it and heal you. 
This means that boss fights with items that spawn in or weapons around the arena have a bit more strategy. You could equip those weapons to fight, or just use them to heal, or throw them when you need some distance. The lightning spell isn't gone though. Instead, once you get the spell, it works in parallel with healing. So when you destroy an item, it'll zap all nearby enemies and also heal the player. It's no longer on a cooldown at all. I'm planning on a magic spell for the throw mechanic too, so that both healing and throwing are really overpowered options. I'm starting to feel more confident about how these systems work together, but I'll say the same thing I always say. I've felt this confident before, and things keep getting updated to something better, so we'll see if this sticks. Before I end the video, I wanted to mention that I'm officially now working on game development full-time. I've been employed as a software developer for the past six years after I graduated from college, and I've been doing game development on the side since I was a kid. I'm now on my own, so progress should start to speed up a bit. This is partly made possible thanks to the courses I teach on Udemy. One is about C Sharp and Monogame, and the other is on Lua and Love2D, which is what I'm using to make my current game. I have links in the description if you'd be interested in checking those out. Thank you so much for your support, and thank you for watching.